budget speech address last week, Finance Minister Ntlantla Nene announced that guarantees have been provided to the South African Post Office subject to implementation of its turnaround strategy. This comes as a state-owned company faced many challenges, repeated strikes and a decline in the mail and courier business and a shift to digital communication. Now, as part of the intensified efforts to stabilize the operations at the South African Post Office, an administrator has been appointed. This morning, we are joined in studio by Dr. Simo Lushaba. He is the South African Post Office's Administrator. Very good to have you in studio. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Good morning, Leanne, and good morning to the viewers. All right, so you were recently appointed as the Administrator for the South African Post Office. Yes. What is your role in, in actually stabilizing the state-owned entity? Well, yeah, let, let me explain that uh, the board of the South African Post Office resigned in November. And uh, in terms of the South African Post Office Act of 2011, the minister is then empowered to appoint an administrator and give him the powers of the board, him or her, the powers of the board, uh, to actually try and help the organization to stabilize. So my role is to look at all the areas where there is instability in the post office uh, that has created the current situation where the post office finds itself and try and find solutions. The most important of those roles is to develop a turnaround strategy that will put the organization back on a trajectory for growth and stability. Yeah. How bad is the situation at the post office? I mean, we have seen... Mm particularly this this last strike i mean it was mm. almost four months long it mm. was a crippling strike mm. what did it do to the operations it is it is very bad Leon. it is extremely bad the operations had a huge backlog of about 70 million parcels and letters it actually creates a huge amount of distrust and con and lack of confidence uh, by the customers which has resulted in a downturn in the revenues of the post office look the post office was already under pressure before the strike yeah. uh, precisely because it has had a series of, of strikes. Uh, in the past year, 2014 alone, it had about 14 uh, strikes, uh, four strikes, sorry, uh, which disrupted the operations of the post office. And that has resulted in a very, very difficult situation where the organization is struggling to keep its head above the water. Yeah. I mean, 70 million packages and yes. backlogs. Have yes. you managed to clear this backlog? Where, where are yes. we at that? We, we have cleared. It took a lot longer than we actually hoped to, to do because we cleared it towards the end of February. But it has been cleared now. There is no more backlog from, from the strike, fortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it, it is a situation that nobody wishes even on his worst enemy. No, certainly not. Yes. I know I was standing in a, in a post office the other day and somebody received a birthday card for their birthday that was in, I think it was the end of October last year. Yes. And they got it yes. this weekend. This week. yeah. And they were quite happy. Yeah. That they actually did get a birthday card. Yeah. So only yeah. in South Africa can we be happy for getting a birthday card five months later. But nonetheless, this is the problem. What's going to happen? Now, I, I believe, before we talk about your role, that there is possibly a pending strike coming up in the next week. So yeah. you may have cleared this backlog, but there is another strike hanging over your head. Yes, that, that's the very unfortunate situation at the post office. Look, the post office has a huge history of broken promises, disagreements, and, and it's got into a stage where uh, workers have resorted to solving all of the problems by disrupting operations. But obviously, there is a limit to that. Unfortunately, we still have a situation where one of our unions did not agree to the wage settlement that we reached at the end of November last year. Uh, they still want higher wages. They want uh, conversions of uh, casual employees to be done quicker than the organization can actually afford to do. So unfortunately, uh, we are talking to everybody at the moment. We are trying very hard to engage as much as we can to find solutions that will last in the organization but the organization is in a very very bad state yeah. and we cannot take another strike all right so looking at what the national treasury has provided a 1.7 billion going concern guarantee in the 2014 2015 year and a 270 million rand guarantee to secure and extend your overdraft facility have mm. also been issued 
Where yes. are you going to allocate these funds as a, as a growing concern? <laughs> okay, let, let me explain because sometimes these uh, mechanisms are misunderstood. Yeah. The 1.67 billion rands is not funds. Uh, it's a guarantee that says government will stand behind the organization. So it is still a going concern because the auditors were concerned that unless there is assurance, there's support by the shareholder, you are not going to be able uh, to, to be a going concern in the 12 months uh, following, which means until December uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. That is not physical cash provided to the so organization. It's just a guarantee. It's just a letter okay. of support. In private sector, we call it a letter of support. Okay. But okay. in government, because National Treasury would not like to give an open-ended letter of support, they put a figure to it, and that's called a guarantee. So that's why we call it a going concern guarantee. It mm -hmm. does not provide you with any ability to go and borrow. It just assures your creditors that you are a going concern you have the support of your shareholder then the second one which is 270 million look the post office was having an overdraft of 400 million uh, and that overdraft unfortunately had not been authorized appropriately we then went to government to try and regularize that particular situation and the Minister of Finance then gave the post office a borrowing limit of 320 million because he was concerned that if you borrow too much, you will not be able under the current circumstances to repay that amount of money. However, the banks were unhappy to just give borrow as money on the basis of a borrowing limit. They wanted a guarantee from the shareholder. And then the shareholder, uh, which is the Minister uh, of, of uh, Telecoms and Postal Services, gave us a guarantee of 270 million, which means out of a borrowing limit of 320 million, we are guaranteed 270 million. So if we default on that, we would then be able to, uh, government would step in and, 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 and make right to the people that borrow us, the banks. So again, it's not money from government we are given capacity to go and borrow from, from the, the banks. And as we all appreciate, a business that is not able to grow, a business that's not able to attract revenues, it is dangerous to then uh, just borrow un, at, at an unlimited yeah, level. Yeah. Now. Well, I wish we can get into the nitty gritty as to what you're going to be doing, but we're hoping it's in capable hands. You will uh, turn things around. Uh, Dr. Sima Lushaba is the administrator of the SA Post Office. Hopefully things are going to be better and uh, we won't see another strike happening next week. So thank you very I much. I really for would us. like to, uh, to, to, to appeal mm. to, to all the workers at the Post Office that we, we cannot commit suicide and create a situation where this post office is going to implode. Another strike will be very detrimental to that organization. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much for talking to us here on the program. Thanks, Lee. All right, let's take a break. More on the, uh, the Lesotho elections. After